This one's gonna be different. Who doesn't want to know how to build their life in a way that they can earn the most amount of money while having put the least amount of effort? I feel like so many people in this space are struggling with the money-making part of being a filmmaker. And if you look in the mirror, and while being completely honest with yourself, can say that that's not your case, you can skip this video and go ahead with your life. Look, there's a very particular reason I titled this video Rich Filmmaker, Poor Filmmaker. I think there's a ton of basic principles we can apply from the big papa Kiyosaki and his famous book. Whether you're a DP, director, editor, colorist, VFX artist, or anything in between, if you're working in commercials, TV, or heck, even weddings, here's exactly how you can adopt a rich filmmaker's mindset. The main element is how your mind is set and how you approach your career. This sounds so cliche because it's the only truth that's out there. If you really want it bad, you'll get results. If there are no results, you didn't put enough effort. That's it. Say what you want. Most of us have been conditioned to think and live life as employees. Coming up, I've seen everyone around me working for money, paycheck to paycheck, really. And that's what they used to tell me all the time when I was growing up. You find a job, be a good boy, stay obedient to your boss, and if you're lucky, you'll be set for life. It's as if my life and my financial freedom was always gonna be at someone else's mercy. And I carried that mindset through a lot of the years, and only just over a year ago, I think, it started really landing upon me how pity it was. Now, I realized that environment in which my parents grew up enabled them to have that kind of a mindset, but it doesn't really speak to my reality and doesn't make sense in the current reality that we live in. I mean, filmmaking is closely tied with arts, yeah, and you may be this avant-garde artsy artist persona that doesn't want to care about money. I mean, come on, if you want to make your next short film, you'll have to have cash. You'll either have it yourself or will ask someone to give it to you. See, poor filmmakers often lack a solid financial foundation. They rely solely on their filmmaking projects for income. Your typical commercials, music videos, client work, which can often be unpredictable and really inconsistent. This financial instability can limit your creative pursuits. And what's even worse than that is that it can hinder your ability to take risks or invest in the future projects. It was only in the beginning of this year that it hit me hard and I fully realized that freelancing is a good stepping stone where I learn a ton of skills, but it cannot guarantee me anything, any certainty. Yeah, I was working with the top brands and making the high level commercials, but that was never why I started filmmaking in the first place. I started filmmaking because I wanted to tell stories through films, no matter long form or short form. Doesn't even matter if it's released in the theaters or here on YouTube. And even though the money was good, when you're freelancing, you are still a gun for hire and you're working for someone and making their creative vision come to reality. So building a business and approaching it as one was the only logical way out of this rut. And so I did. So here's a harsh reality that I'm gonna share with you and something I wish I had known when I was starting out. Saving money is just not good enough. Everyone on YouTube says, you gotta be saving, save 10%, 20% every month, 30%, whatever. But the reality is that if you're not making enough, saving is just not your game, period. There's a limit to how much you can save, but there is no limit to how much you can earn. Literally, any one of you watching this video could potentially 10x their income by developing more income streams and stacking multiple skills together. By approaching your filmmaking as a business, you are forced to learn those high income skills that everyone here on YouTube talks about, like marketing, social media, writing or copywriting and sales. You stack them on top of each other and shift your focus towards building a well-oiled machine, money-making machine, basically. Think about this. If you're earning, say, $3,000 a month and saving 1,000 bucks, you have $2,000 for your expenses. 
having 1k in savings isn't too bad, right? Here's the catch. It will take you 84 years to reach a million dollars. And if you're 26 like me, good luck enjoying that milli when you're 110. And if you include inflation, it won't get you that far. In 80 years from now, maybe a used car? And living in the modern world, especially in the Western countries, a million bucks won't get you that far anyways, even in today's value. That's a mid-sized condo in most major cities. Or if we're talking about filmmaking, that's one indie feature film's budget. That's it. But if you could just increase that number slightly and make, say, 5000 a month and set aside $3,000 every month, you would accelerate that process to 28 years. Do you see the point? What if it's not 5,000? What if it's like, say, 10K in savings every month? Sky is the limit. An asset is basically something that's valuable and can generate you money by itself. It can be things like rights to movies, scripts, or footage that you can sell or license to make money in the more traditional way of having a filmmaking assets, I guess. But they can also be actual tangible stuff like production gear that you can use on set or rent it out to yourself or to other people, your colleagues. Even digital products like online courses, tutorials about some specific processes can also be uh, assets that you can make uh, money from. Personally, if I see some product on the internet uh, that provides genuine value and can help me save my time or optimize my process or maybe teach me some new skills, I'm more than happy to just buy it. Some of you may already know this year I started this channel to educate and help beginner filmmakers to speed up their career advancement. I also wanted to help working directors who are pitching a lot and want to speed up their treatment writing process, so I launched my treatment templates. Now I genuinely believe that all my products are immensely helpful and that's why I sell them. These digital products have generated me some extra money this year and to be exact, here is the screenshot of my sales this year from my digital products only. And keep in mind, this store has been up for only about half a year, which is evident on this graph. So obviously it's all pre-tax and it's all revenue, but because it's digital products, the profit margins are really thick. Apart from my time, it doesn't really cost me that much to set it up and get it going. I mean, yeah, it's not a lot, but it's also not too bad for the first year. Here I want you to understand, I'm not flexing, but <laughs> I just want to give you a real world example and a fresh, I guess, perspective. This is just one stream of income. I also have my commercial directing, I have affiliate links on this YouTube channel, I have paid partnerships. The more you can grow your personal brand, the more doors it will open in front of you, simple. So on the other hand, a liability refers to something that drains your wallet without providing a return on investment. These can include excessive spending on unnecessary equipment or resources that are not utilized effectively. Some things that may seem like great investments initially can turn out to be money-sucking liabilities. That camera you thought you will use often that's now collecting dust on your shelf and depreciating every day that's a liability. Or taking on a project that have high production costs but very limited revenue potential can also be considered a liability. Remember, investments are worth the risk as long as you understand and as long as you have done your thorough research beforehand. Most importantly, improve your financial intelligence. In other words, invest in yourself and your knowledge. To improve your financial intelligence as a filmmaker, it's essential to continuously educate yourself about the money topic and how it works. Read books and resources on personal finance and investing and familiarize yourself with, you know, concepts like budgeting or saving or investing or debt. Take courses and attend workshops and look for workshops that are specifically catered to uh, creative people so that it will be more applicable to your unique case. And these courses can teach you about financial planning, tax strategies and investment opportunities relevant to the, I guess, film or not film, but creative industry. And listen, I personally was in such deep pain 
and discomfort this exact time last year, I was really stressed out about my financial situation. And although my day rate was three and a half thousand back in a day, I didn't have any control over my own schedule. And being a family guy, I couldn't really enjoy my time being a dad, knowing that just a couple more months without you know, without work, without projects would lead me to famine. I mean, yeah, I felt like an invincible man when I was booked back to back to back. And then like a complete failure when I was experiencing these seasons of no work or losing a few pitches at a time. So something deep within me felt completely off. And Kiyosaki's book says, the rich don't work for money, they make money work for them. And I knew I was doing exactly the opposite. I knew that just like a wage employee, I was working for money, yet I didn't have the same benefits and protection uh, a wage employee enjoys at a day job. So I had to find a way to make money work for me. I started delving into business literature, including uh, this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And while it's an old book that mainly promotes the idea of being a real estate investor, it covers the basics very well, I think. So just apply those basics and remember that investing in your knowledge provides the best return on investment and it's not taxable. If you're a filmmaker and you want to gain some invaluable insight into expanding your professional network and signing with a talent agent who can assist you with sales and promotion in the commercial space, you should definitely check out my new book, Get Signed. So together with my own rep agent, Olya, we spent the last five months working on this book. It's very short and condensed, yet very helpful. It will guide you through the complex world of talent agencies. It's going to show you all kinds of formats that modern agencies work with and help you find the right agents that will fit your needs. It will also get into building the most productive working relationship that will help you land those jobs you want. And hey, if you're watching this video before the end of the year, you can score a sweet discount on the book's launch. Just check out the links in the description. So principle number five, the power of leverage. If you've ever explored the personal finance topics or researched some <laughs> literature on the subject, you've probably encountered the concept of leverage. But as a filmmaker, you might wonder, what does this leverage thing have to do with me and my skills and my career? So here I will try my best to break it down in very simple terms. Leverage means using your resources and your strengths strategically to achieve your desired outcome. In filmmaking specifically, leverage can be applied in many different ways, I think. So for example, building a strong personal brand as a filmmaker will leverage your reputation and recognition in the industry. It will attract more opportunities, collaborations, and higher paying projects. Do you notice what I'm trying to do here? I'm, I'm basically creating my personal brand with this YouTube channel. So I'm trying my best to provide you all with some valuable content and take you on my journey, you know what I mean? So that way you can use my experience to accelerate your own growth and avoid, I guess, my mistakes. So in that process, I'm building a reputation and trust, which will ultimately help me have more opportunities in the future. So with an audience, I can basically collaborate with brands to create projects that I'm really passionate about and tell stories that I really truly want to share with you guys. You can do that same thing too if you build your own personal brand and you can leverage your business network, for example. All these years working as a commercial director, making commercials for brands, I was slowly developing a wide network of connections within the filmmaking industry. Having a strong network can help me access resources and find funding or investors and secure distribution deals if I ever decide to make a feature film, for example. So earlier this year, I made a short film called Epiphany and I was able to make it really cheap, just over a thousand dollars, I think, because I knew a lot of the people in the industry and I knew they were willing to partake in this project because they were just interested in it. And there's a whole entire video about how we made Epiphany, so you can go ahead and watch that. But that's just one example of how you can leverage your network. You need to analyze your exact situation and determine what you have access to and use it to your advantage. And remember, it's a slow process, but quitting won't speed it up. It's simple, but it's not easy. Otherwise, everyone would be rich and having an easy life. But the truth is, life is hard. 
And things that you truly want to have have to be prioritized and you must put your maximum effort into it. So don't be wondering why you don't have any money when money is your fourth, fifth item on your priority list. I mean, it might as well be at the bottom, right? Just be open with yourself and if it's important to you, put more effort. Yeah, I personally derive tremendous benefit from talking about this with my friends and colleagues because it makes all of us ultimately more aware of the opportunities around us and keeps us in check with reality. So I thought I might start bringing some of those conversations to this channel to provide you guys with more value. Let me know if you enjoy this type of discussion about the financial aspect of filmmaking. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.